Hello and welcome to section 9, Bayesian Model Averaging. The goal is to systematically find a PMAP from data, and we saw that most algorithms are guaranteed to find the true structure only for large number of data instances. What about smaller size data sets? How to deal with them? Okay, again, score-based algorithms search for the structure with the high score. Is this structure a PMAP for the true distribution, the one with the high score? Well, we know that the BIC and Bayesian score are consistent, and this implies that for the data with a large enough number of instances, the structure that maximizes the scores is a PMAP for the true distribution. We already saw this. But for data with a limited number of instances, we can't, confident, we can't confidently select the high score structure, even for moderate size data sets. Choosing one of the high score structures as the true structure may not be meaningful because these high score structures, they can have similar scores but very different structures. So what is the solution? I cannot take one easily. Um, what should I do? Well, we can use the Bayesian theory to consider all structures. This allows us to quantify our uncertainty about the query of interest. To answer queries such as whether the link XY exists in the true network, I want to know uh, not necessarily what the true network looks like, but just if COVID and flu, for example, are linked or not. To answer this, we can define the function f of g that answers the query for the structure g. For example, fg equals to 1 if the link between x and y belongs to g and 0 otherwise. Okay. Now, then using the Bayesian approach, we obtain its expectation, the expectation of this f over all structures. So here we have the expectation of f with the posterior distribution, summation of f of g times the posterior distribution over all g. Great. Can we also answer probabilistic queries such as a joint probability distribution? Let's see. Imagine that you're given this data set and you're asked to determine the probability of infection to COVID while not wearing a mask. We can ask this question in a different way. If we observe a new individual not recorded in the data set, what is the probability that she does not wear a mask and is infected with COVID? Now, I'm emphasizing on a new individual because if we knew that the individual is already in the data set, then we didn't need to go into the difficulty. The answer was just there in the data set. So looking at the query in this way, it's basically the same as wanting to know that what is the likely likelihood of a new data instance. Xi of 13, because I had 12 here, so this would be number 13, being equal to this case, which is m equal to 0, c equal to 1, having COVID, not, not wearing a mask. So I basically want to calculate the probability of this new data instance given this data set that I had. This is known as prediction making. We briefly touched this in the parameter learning uh, chapter. Okay, great. So can we answer probabilistic queries? The answer is yes. Given a data set D from 1 to N instances, we can predict instance N plus 1 as follows. The probability condition of, the, of the new instance condition on the data set, we can, sum, we can sum over P of G condition on D times P of the new instance condition on D and G. And this will be over all networks G. Great. How can we calculate this? Because we don't have P of G and uh, condition on D or this one. Well, one way is to do it in this way. I just write uh, this probability of the new instance condition on D using the definition of a conditional probability. And then what can I say about this? Well, this is then the computation of the marginal likelihood of the original data, P of D, and the augmented data, P of D and the new instance. Just know that this is 
I can consider this as a new data set D prime. And this is D. So if I know how to do P of D, I can also calculate this one, right? So the denominator is com computed similarly to the denominator. And for the denominator, I have P of D equal to when I marginalize out G, the structure. This I can write as exponential to the power of a log of P of G and D. And here, I'm using my knowledge about score of Bayesian, which is basically the log of P of G and D. So I can write it in this way. And then, under the assumption that the Bayesian score is decomposable, score B will be the summation of the family scores. And because it's exponential, e to the power of summation, this can be written as the multiplication over each of the exponential terms. So. I got my P of D as the summation over all structures multiply the, the, uh, and for each of them the multiplication of all of the variables and I have the family scores uh, exponential of the family scores of each of them. Done? Well, not really. The problem is that the number of all different graphs has an order greater than exponential, super exponential. And a way to, to tackle this problem, as usual, is that we can limit the parents to D, say parents of x less than or equal to D, but then still this is super exponential. Well, we can make it easier and suppose that the structures are consistent with some ordering over the variables. Okay, this is not super exponential anymore, but sti still it is exponentially large. But it's better than super exponential. Okay, great. So we go with these two conditions. Again, the goal is that we want to calculate this. We saw that G is huge, the, uh, the number of Gs that we, we should be searching over. So instead, we are making these two assumptions. And then this ordering implies that the set of parents for the variable xi can be any subset of its preceding variables, x1 to xi minus 1. We have seen this in the previous sections. With the smaller, s with the size smaller or e equal to d. Now, if I denote the set of all these possible parents but by ui, then the p of d that I was interested in the denominator is equal to this form. It will be the multiplication. So you see that instead of having the summation of G, I'm having the summation over the parents. I'm having the multiplication of all of the variables, summation of all possible parent set that XI can take. And that will be all possible subsets of size D from X1 to XI minus 1. And then I will do it in this way. Note that I'm putting this in gray, condition on the ordering. So we really don't need to emphasize it. But if we're using the ordering, then all of these here really should be conditioned on the ordering as well. OK, great. The parents can be selected for each variable independently. And this is because the parents for each variable are consistent with the ordering and do not make any restrictions on the set of parents of the other variables. This is the good point about this ordering, which simplifies our calculations. OK, to see how the family scores would look like, recall this formulation of uh, the Bayesian score, log of the marginal plus log of the prior. We also know that if we, uh, we have a Dirichlet prior for the CPD parameters, the family parameters, theta of xi condition on parents of xi condition on g, then we have this formulation for the marginal likelihood. Now, under Dirichlet priors for all structures d, so that we can use this formula, and under a uniform prior, p of g equal to 1 over g, where g is simply the number of DAGs over the variables, so I'm assuming a uniform distribution, then the family scores are determined from this formula. I just took the log of this, and the log of multiplication uh, will be the summation of the logs. And I have a plus 
be this term, but I wanted to keep this in the sigma, so I multiplied it by 1 over n, and then this will be my family score. Now, since I needed the exponential of the family score, then I can just take e to the power of that term, and uh, you will see that e to the power of this term will be simply 1 over g to the power of 1 minus uh, 1 over n, and the other one, uh, just the log will cancel out. Okay, so I will end up with this formula. Just note that why this can be considered as a family score, because only we have the terms of xi and parents of xi. We don't have any other variable involved here. And this is ju just a constant that I distributed it equally among all the variables. Okay, so I have my formula, which results in p of d being equal to this term. Uh, I just, I'm just using the formula we had here, replacing the exponential of the family scores. So this is what I will end up with. And you can note that here I have 1g to the power of 1 over n. This can easily be taken out of the summation, but the point is that it's repeated n times, so it will be basically 1 over g and can be taken out of the multiplication. So this is an alternative. If I'm not going to calculate each family score one by one, I can use this one. Great. So let's see it in practice. Again, I want to calculate the probability of this new instance given the status set D. And I'm putting the order here. It's, uh, as we said, it doesn't matter really as long as you're consistent. This is just to emphasize that it's based on the ordering. Okay. So uh, I need an order. Uh, the one I'm considering here is C, like less than M, meaning that M does not take any parent, but C can take either no parent or M. So P of D using the formula we saw is this term, the exponentials of the possibilities of M, which is no parent, times the cases for C, which is either no parent or M as the parent. And the expanded form will be just this. Okay, so again, M no parent, C can have two cases. What about the uniform prior P of G? Well, 1 over G to the power of 1 over N. And we know that for G, how many cases we can have here? Well, it's just when we have this ordering C, M, we can have only two possibilities. Uh, either no edge between C and M, or there's one from C, uh, from M to C. And N is two. I only have two variables. And this is what I will get. Great. I'm supposing a, a Dirichlet prior with all hyperparameters equal to one. And I'm ready to do the calculations. Okay, so the first term, the family score, this is as we have done in the previous sections. So I just count, I can count how many times m equals to 1, m equals to 0, and then add the hyperparameters. I will get this number, we'll replace it here, and this is multiplied by the, uh, the term that we had for uh, 1 over g. I just want to show you back this. Here we go, like 1 over g to the power of 1 over n. So I'm doing this, this part now. So I have this multiplication, and now I can proceed to the next family score, quite similar to the first one. Everything is color-coded, and it appears to be exactly the same value in for this data set. The final family score, again, similar, just a little bit more complicated. I need to calculate all of, I need to consider all the possibilities for C and M. We have seen this again in the previous sections. Everything is color-coded, and I can calculate it similarly. Okay. Great, so I have now P of D, which is this term. I still need to calculate the, uh, the probability of the augmented data when I add this new instance. Recall it was the probability of not wearing a mask, but 
being infected by COVID. And I will do it exactly the same way as how I calculated P of D. Just note that here I'm taking the 1 over G to the power of 1 over N and uh, sigma multiplied over I. I'm taking this term out. It's as the second formulation. If I do the math, I will get this final value. And this means that the probability of the new instance is equal to 1.43 uh, times 10 to the power of minus 8 this term and divided by this term I will get 0 0.22 so the probability of a new instance being this 1 0 is 22 percent okay great back to the lemma I had this lemma provided and we used it to calculate the probability of a new instance for prediction making here, for each variable xi, ui includes at most d out of n members, and this results in a computational complexity of n to the power of d plus 1. Okay, so all that I did, this is the computational complexity in general. Now, note that this lemma also allows me to obtain the posterior of a feature f. Uh, I just follow this formula. The P of F condition on D will be P of F and D divided by P of D. And for example, if the posterior of a node X having the parents uh, U, if I want to calculate this, then using this lemma, I will have this proposition. The probability of the parents of X being equal to U condition on the data set, this will be this fraction just note that in the denominator, I only have put uh, th the exponential, this term, of, of the exponential family of xi. I'm not summing over all possible values of uh, xi because I know it has to be a certain value u. But in the denominator, I want p of d, so I have to put exactly this term, and I have to sum over all values of uh, the parents of xi. Just note that this multiplication over the other values of i, over other nodes, they just cancel out. They, be, they are the same in the denominator and the denominator. So that's how I end up with this term. To summarize, we saw that most algorithms are guaranteed to find the true structure only for large number of data instances. And the question was how to deal with small data sets. And the answer is by Bayesian model averaging. Here provided the formula for prediction making. Thank you for your attention.